Okay, we're back here live in uh, Silicon Valley, the heart of Silicon Valley. We're at the San Jose Convention Center. I'm John Furrier, and we're here, the very special uh, segment here at Hadoop Summit. You know, we bring uh, theCUBE, our flagship program that extracts the signal from the noise. We call it the ESPN of tech, and highlighting the athletes, the tech athletes, the CEOs, the entrepreneurs, the ones that are making the industry grow and happen, creating wealth and solutions. And obviously, we consider those guys athletes and stars uh, in our world, but uh, it's rare that we actually get real athletes on theCUBE, and uh, that's what we're going to talk about here today, athletes and their mission, and how, how that's all blending together and, and what that relates to to tech. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante, a wannabe professional athlete. And we're <laughs> here with Sky Christofferson, who is a real athlete and an entrepreneur. Sky, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. It's a real pleasure to have you. Thanks for having me, guys. Appreciate it. So tell us a little bit about uh, yourself and uh, your athletic uh, accomplishments. Well, I was a cyclist in the late 90s and the early 2000s. Mm. Uh, this is velodrome cycling. So it's an indoor track, you know, it's banked. It's the fastest flatland sport in the Olympics. And um, did this until 2000 and then retired. So you were a serious adrenaline junkie then, is that right? That's right, <laughs> right. yeah, yeah. What's it like going around the, the, the banked track at, uh, well, I mean, how fast are you guys going in the velodrome? Uh, close to 45 miles an hour. So it is a crazy sensation. You know, you're on this, you have two Gs, the two times the level of gravity pushing you and whipping you around these turns, so it's kind of like a, a wooden roller coaster. How did you get into velodrome cycling? <clears throat> well, I grew up in Tucson, Arizona, mm -hmm. and I came up on the road, road racing, and, <clears throat> excuse me, I was always good at the short distance crits, and I made the junior Olympic team, went to St. Louis, and met these guys from LA, and they said, you can do just the one minute sprint, without having to ride the other 90 <laughs> miles, come try out the You'd track. You'd be really good and at so that. <laughs> I did that and it was a dream because you know it's, it was fast and short and, and it was much more suited for that being 200 pounds. So what are you so. most proud of in terms of your accomplishments on the, on the velodrome cycle circle? Well, the, uh, so m more recently I tried to make a comeback for London mm -hmm. 2012 and when I was uh, preparing for that a couple years ago, I used this digital health program uh, led by Dr. Eric Topol down in San Diego who uh, was an advisor through the project and I actually broke a world record uh, during that run and the previous holder of that record got a lifetime ban for performance enhancing drugs. So that I think was the most uh, proud achievement of anything that so I So you did. beat the guy that was doping, and obviously right. you weren't doping. <laughs> and, uh, right. So okay, so that sent the light bulb off in your head, and I mean, you know, give us uh, your, your commentary on the, this doping in the industry. I mean, we're all just, just right. disappointed with the whole situation, but uh, what's, what's your take on the whole thing? Right, I, well doping has been a huge problem in sports. We're seeing the depth of it now mm. in cycling and a lot of other sports in baseball. In other sports, right. Yeah, so we are looking for ways now to move forward you know, with reforming without drugs, but still getting the breakthrough performances because that's human nature. We love pushing the envelope. Crowds want to see amazing things happen. So how do you keep that going without, you know, depending on the substances that are very effective short term, but what we're seeing long term is that they're not. And we think these natural alternatives using big data to optimize, you know, lifestyle factors, uh, they call it the summation of marginal gains in British cycling. And it's, you know, how do you find all of these, these fine-tuned, you know, optimizers. And so I think there are possibilities there for a natural way. Sky, I got to talk to you about uh, the trend, obviously, we were just talking about with our previous guests, omni-channels, and the, the social media world has changed the, the dynamic around, you know, direct to the consumer, Twitter, you're seeing athletes commenting on when the NBA Finals was won, athletes, congratulations to, you know, Sha uh, these guys, and you know, uh, James and everything, and the playoffs, but now there's a whole, opens up a whole nother dimension, and, and, and recently we were in, in Vegas with HP, HP Discover, and Kevin Bacon was up on stage talking about big data, and you know, the whole six degrees of separation from Kevin Bacon became this viral sensation. And he ended up parlaying that into a really good social cause. So I want to ask you, as you transformed from a world-class athlete, your opportunities could have been in the old world limited to using that celebrityism to, to get you know, maybe a job somewhere. But now with big data, you have a direct platform. How has that changed right. you personally as an entrepreneur and what have you done with that? 
Well, the, the project last summer was, it, it was quite reactionary. You know, we had this situation where the women's cycling team was five seconds away from even being considered in the medals. And we had three months to try to make up that time. So the program that uh, Dr. Topol had, had led and we formulated, um, I had a dead end because the U.S. didn't send a men's team. So I turned to my teammate and said, you know, let's apply this to try to help you guys. And each problem that came up would come up quickly. You know, the data we got overwhelmed with and we had to find a solution. Data mirrors, you had me here today talking about some of these tools using Hadoop uh, as a technology. And, you know, we just, we, we quickly solved them as they came. So I think moving forward, what we want to do is build a much better platform for this and everything's evolving very quickly and the key is just getting all of this stuff you know in a much more efficient way to, to manage you know as we bring this to larger and larger groups. So how did um, that how did that data and the way in which you process it and analyze it affect the outcome? Can you explain that in a little bit more detail? Yeah so the you know you in Olympic training the goal is really to clamp down as many variables as you can you know, in, in lifestyle and, and the routine. So you need to know which decisions or which things to recommend. And you can do different things to control the environment. Uh, and I gave the example of circadian rhythms. Uh, another example would be the temperature that you sleep every night. And so when you look at individuals' data and you see when are they getting more deep sleep, because that's when human growth hormones released and you recover better what temperatures producing that. We use water-cooled mattress toppers that actually set the exact temperature for each athlete. And some it was 64 degrees, some it would be 68 degrees. And you know, th those are examples of you know, direct, um, controllable variables. And in a, a few short months, you were able to shave those, what was it, five seconds off five. and meet those, than five those, those goals, those yep. objectives. Yep. <laughs> That's awesome, okay, yep. now, so now uh, you've uh, transitioned into this new career as an entrepreneur. Talk a little bit about that. Uh, you're forming a company, you've got this documentary going. Can you give us some detail there? Right, so as this project unfolded quickly last summer, we uh, were filming some of the behind the scenes you know, action and that's being made into the documentary Personal Gold, which is due out next year. And that'll show kind of the trials and tribulations of you know, doing an ad hoc big data experiment like this. And uh, now the goal, we're, we're, we've started a company called Optimized Athlete. And my wife and I also had a company called Vicasso up in Seattle. Um, it runs on a platform. So we're looking now just for the right partners, you know, to really develop a platform to make this a lot more manageable in the future. You Sky, know. really congratulations to that. I think you know, one of the things Dave and I are most proud of when we do theCUBE here is really looking at how the new technology is enabling people to have more opportunities. And certainly with social media, people are connecting and sharing. Um, but while we have you here, obviously cycling has turned into, we, in Silicon Valley, so we call it the new golf, right? So you know, people are cycling. I've heard and, about that actually, yeah. And for meetings and Yeah, and I mean, things. it has really become a really right. cool um, galvanizing way. And you guys were on a, on a run this morning, I heard, um, here at the conference. Um, so cycling right. is cool. So what's your advice to the folks out there? The cycling fans out there, uh, the weekend dads like me who have four kids who are just trying <laughs> to get on a bike, to guys who are actually in groups and it's, a, it's not only a physical endurance and exercise, but it's also fun right. and, and collaborative. So what's right. your advice to the cycling fans out there? Well, we, it's, it's interesting you noted the, you know, the health element. There's a, a guy in our documentary, a co-founder of Seagate Computers, Bob Bininger. He's 76 years old and he's a spin instructor. He, he is you know, advocating cycling because it's low impact. It's so good cardiovascularly. And I would say, get some of these devices. You walk in the Apple store, you can get a Bluetooth heart rate monitor. You, know, you can get a sleep tracker. And you can use these same tools that we did for the Olympic project you know, to track your progress, even if it's getting out once a week or twice a week on the weekends. And cycling is just an awesome sport to stay fit and low impact and yeah. Any uh, technical advice? Uh, taking the corner, obviously Skyline Boulevard and where I live is dangerous. People, you know, there's, you know, it's, right? it's dangerous. I mean, you know, <laughs> it's not something that's easy. Any, any, any advice to the, to the folks out there to keep it going? Right, that is, well, my advice would be 
find your nearest velodrome. There are no cars. <laughs> it's a very safe, <laughs> controlled environment, as we've been talking about, and give it a shot on the track. <laughs> Hey, Sky, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Uh, true athlete, very inspirational story. Thanks for coming to Hadoop Summit, and, and uh, props to Datamir for highlighting this, Definitely. because I think this is one of those societal benefits where it's not so much the, the, the big flashy business solution, but it really is adding value to people's lives. There's some personal victories involved as, you, as you're documenting. Right. But more importantly, you're changing lives, and that, that collaborative aspect of technology is really key, and that speaks volumes to the community here and in the open source community. Um, this is the new normal. Um, this is theCUBE. We'll be right back with our next guest uh, after this short break. I'm John Furrier of SiliconANGLE. Join with Dave Vellante, we'll be right back. <laughs>